the beginning of May in Washington County, Idaho, and everything is glowing emerald green. The yellow blooms of arrowleaf balsam root light up the landscape. Some of that beautiful greenery has a bad side, however. They are noxious weeds invading the countryside. Leafy spurge, scotch thistle, rush skeleton weed. All of those invasive weeds pose major threats to native perennial plants on private and public rangelands in Idaho. On May 1st, Washington County landowners came together to control those noxious weeds. Today we're having a cooperative weed management area, neighborhood spray day. It's not nearly as overwhelming when you're all out working together. It's all about cooperation and spending time together as a community. The spread of noxious weeds, non-native invasive plants, are considered one of the top three primary threats to rangeland ecosystems in the West. They can outcompete native plants and forbs, take over vast acres of land, increase fire hazard, and negatively affect livestock and wildlife. The economic impact of noxious weeds taking over rangeland can be huge. Plus, Idaho state law requires property owners to control and prevent the spread of noxious weeds. Justin Mink, a Washington County rancher, understands those obligations. That's why he's a leader on Neighborhood Spray Day in Advent Gulch. Take care of the weeds, uh, take care of the issues that we need to take care of to be good stewards and to allow that next generation to come, come back in. The Mink family has been building their operations for four generations, with the fifth coming on strong. I like pushing calves. That's always been our goal, and uh, I feel we're working pretty hard towards that. You have to have the best management practices going forward, or otherwise you will not have a future. The Mink family depends on their private lands in Advent Gulch. It's their spring range for cattle. Keeping those lands as free of noxious weeds as possible leaves room for native plants to thrive for livestock and wildlife. Cambridge rancher Roy Schwenkfelder feels the same way. The, the noxious weed issues are a detriment to all that range health. They, they make the other plants not be as thrifty and, and don't, they don't survive when noxious weeds come in and take over the landscape. Controlling weeds is crucial to Royce and Pam Schwenkfelder because they raise cattle on their 12,000 acre ranch year round. It's all we got. On our deal, we're gonna make our best effort to try to create a positive effect on what we own. And now when there's a drought or a fire or weeds or something bad happening, it's all on me or all on our crew to, on Mark or somebody to figure out to how to manage through that. Ranchers like Justin Mink and Royce Schwenkfelder show why Washington County has been a leader in noxious weed management in Idaho. The county created a cooperative weed management area 25 years ago. Midvale rancher Dave Springer was there at the beginning leading the way. They put together an advisory board including landowners, the Forest Service, and Bureau of Land Management. We blurred boundaries and worked together to go after the noxious weed problem. Trying to provide a means for the average landowner and the agency people to address the noxious weed program and comply with the, the Idaho's noxious weed law. That's what the whole story is about, and it's been reasonably successful. Neighborhood Spray Day helps motivate landowners to come together for a common cause. We do 12 different neighborhood projects. Um, most of them are two day at least. We have anywhere from eight, 10 people on a project to maybe 35 you know, in a day. People look forward to spray day. You don't want to miss spray day, you know. Um, it's just a really popular thing. Davis pre-mixes the herbicides for landowners on spray day to ensure the right chemicals are used to control specific weeds. 
Our cooperative weed management system is a really good system and that allows people to partner and Bryce has talked about how that allows people to rally around a topic and, and really deal with something across ownership boundaries and so that that's really important. Neighborhood Spray Day also serves as an educational reminder to new landowners about the legal obligation they have to control weeds on their property. But we have a strong education program. We do a lot of flyers and mailers and classes and, and those things are all important because people have to learn what's here and they have to learn, we all do, that we can control them, you know, one bite at a time, one day at a time and they are seeing positive results. But when we first started, you didn't have to look more than five feet and you were in thistles or spurge or, or something to that effect. And, and that was affecting our grazing. Once the project's going and you know, the groundwork, that's, that's the enjoyable part of it, and seeing the results. You know, they've been doing this four day project in this area in the Gulch for numerous years now and it's been a great success. Prather, who is the author of the best-selling guide to Idaho's noxious weeds, recommends taking an aggressive approach. It's trying to catch things, if you can, when they're, when they're still limited. Davis and the landowners doubled down on treatments after the Woodhead Fire burned 100,000 acres in 2021. The Woodhead Fire here was a huge setback. It was devastating what it did to this range. They've worked hard to restore that land, you know, and the weed fight st almost started over because it woke up all that seed. Um, but they're diligent, they're determined, and they are gonna win this war. Schwenkfelder has been working with Prather for years to determine the best ways to control rush skeleton weed, one of the most prolific noxious weeds in Idaho. The weed occupies more than 3 million acres of rangelands in Idaho. Biological control can help. This is rush skeleton weed and what we're seeing is, is activity from the different biological control agents that are on rush skeleton weed. When we see one of this particular size right here, which is about the size of a thumbnail, there could be, uh, that's a fairly good sized gall, there could be 4,000 mites in that particular gall. So those mites live about 11 days, and when these galls dry out, the, the female uh, picks up uh, what's called a spermatophore and they impregnate themselves and move out. And, and go to another growing point and start a new gall. The biocontrols don't eradicate rush skeleton weed, but they significantly suppress growth and seed production. Getting down to the fine details of land and weed management, Prather says biocontrols do better if rush skeleton weed tries to sprout in a stronghold of perennial grasses. That perennial grass limits the amount of resources that are available to that plant and so that plant grows more slowly and the mites are able to catch up and grow. He recommends herbicide control on skeleton weed in areas where you have a high density of perennial grasses. A study showed that with at least 16 percent ground cover with perennial grasses rush skeleton weed will struggle. At that point you can spray and you may not have to come back and spray again. Um, provided that we can get this, these biocontrol agents going and then, it, then you get a balance. Overall, rush skeleton weed is a tough challenge, Schwenkfelder says. Started out trying to do it with, uh, with farming it out. That didn't work because skeleton weed, uh, it loves to be tilled off because it just produces six more plants because that's the way that plant's wired. It, it has a very deep root. It comes up close to the top of the ground by the crown and uh, if you cut the crown off with a shovel or a disc or a plow or anything, it just uses those roots and makes five or 10 more plants. So Schwenkfelder uses a mix of range management, herbicide control, and biocontrol to manage rush skeleton weed. 
He invested in a large drone to control invasive weeds more effectively in topsy-turvy terrain. His son-in-law, Mark Mora, flies the drone. Using their drone, they can get more uniform coverage and use less chemical for the best results. One of the things that's happening in the whole industry is the fact that you know, you might over chemical some ground and that's not your idea because you'll, you'll decrease your production if there's too much of a chemical on. You can get down on a, like a 25 foot height uh, with a drone, you can come in and you can just follow along the ground at a slow pace and very specifically put that chemical right where it needs to be on that plant population. And, uh, and maybe you can do that with four ounces instead of a pint and a half. I'm pretty excited about it. We need to tap into all the information we can find to keep improving rangelands. So we've morphed from privately kind of looking at our weed thing to it being a community thing a little bit. And then further, we're, we're kind of doing things that what we think um, can perpetuate good range management. Adding that weed control piece is a, is a big deal. and. Uh, I don't know, it goes along with just a, a positive management in your rangelands, which is your responsibility if you own them. We're 25 years into this and it, it's still working. Noxious weeds are still noxious and still growing, <laughs> but we're trying to keep them under control and that's the whole objective is to keep them under control.